In this video, I want to talk to you about the data sets you're going to be working with for me throughout the semester that you're with me. It uh, doesn't matter what class you're in. You can be in STAT 1, STAT 2, uh, Honors Research Method, whatever statistics class I teach, I use the same data set because I can make it work for anything we're, we're going to be doing. It's very versatile and it works for all the different analyses and I'm going to be teaching any of those classes. So the goal is to either work with apartments, automobiles, or homes. And the only thing I want to do in this uh, video is talk about those three data sets and the type of variables you're going to be collecting, the numbers, um, and just data. Anything dealing with the software, which is uh, going to be statistics, or the application gateway at USF, uh, any of those things will be talked about in different videos. So in this video, it's the data sets. And before I begin, there's a general statement I want to make. Be vanilla. You know when you're asked your favorite ice cream? Some people say like chocolate chip crunch or this or that. Stay vanilla. And you're saying, well, that's really boring. That's what I want with your data. I want boring data. I don't want Maseratis. I want Honda Accords. I don't want France apartments. I want Brandon apartments. I want boring, smaller numbers, less variation. And it's not that you can't work with Maseratis and France apartments or French apartments. It's just that the variation gets really great. And a lot of times you're not going to be able to see a whole lot of uh, useful results. And that's when it gets exciting in this class, when you can find some some useful information from the data you're looking at. So anyway, stay boring. All right, let's talk about apartments. So one of the options is to work with apartment data. And ultimately, we want to try to be able to predict the rent of an apartment. And two variables that I think have something to do with that, and there's probably lots of others, but I keep it simple in this class as much as possible. Two variables I want to think about are the size of the apartment and the location of the apartment. And the locations is where you get splashy or boring. Um, and so you can do the rent. Now I say in this, in this uh, description you see in front of you here, I say for a two bedroom, it doesn't need it to be all two bedrooms. You can do whatever you want. Um, but if you want to be as specific as possible, you can say, let's just work with two bedroom apartments and let's find 25 two bedroom apartments in first location. Maybe a first location is Brandon. And then I'll go to Valrico for 25 other apartments and I'll go to, um, South Tampa for the third 25. So ultimately you're going to end up with 75 observations. It doesn't matter which data set you're working with. Statistics calls them cases. You're going to have 75 observations. And so one of the variables in your data set is going to be location. And you're going to enter those locations as ones, twos, and threes. And throughout the semester, you'll be able to tell me that one is Brandon, two is Valrico, three is South Tampa. Uh, but the variables that you need to collect for these apartments are the rent, the monthly rent, and the size. And so for the first observation, you're going to have three variables. You're going to have a rent, you're going to have a size, and you're going to have location one. For the second apartment, rent, size, location one. For, in fact, for the first 25, you're going to have rent, size. They're all going to be location one. The rents and the sizes should vary for all of them, but the location is going to be one. And then you do 25 more apartments for location two and 25 more for location three. So you're going to be collecting the three variables, rent, size, and location. Now let me jump down to homes. Home prices is going to be very, very similar. We're going to be looking for homes that are for sale. So you're going to be looking at not the rent. That doesn't make sense with a home. You're going to have the asking price. Well, what are some variables that affect how expensive or how inexpensive a home is? Again, I'm going to say size and location. And again, there's going to be other things. And as we talk about the techniques and analyses we're going to look at, it'll get more complicated. We'll be able to add in, in addition to the, the size and the location, maybe the condition of the house, maybe the uh, age of the house, maybe the, the size of the lot that the house is built. There's a whole lot of other variables, but for the purposes of what you're gonna be doing for me, the asking price, the size, the location. Again, vanilla, 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 vanilla. Let's look at my favorite city, Plant City, Florida homes. Let's take a look at Valrico, let's take a look at Brandon. Let's take a look at Lutz. Let's take a look at, it. maybe you do Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, Pasco County. Um, if you wanna do Madrid and France and New York and convert to dollars, that's great. You can do that, but your numbers are gonna be all over the map. You'll still be able to get full credit. You'll still be able to do the analysis. It's just, you're probably gonna have so much variation. It's gonna be hard to see things. That's why I say, say vanilla. All right, so that's the home. So the homes and the apartments are actually pretty close in terms of 
uh, two of the variables, the size and location, is going to be the same. It's just whether you're collecting rents for apartments or asking prices for home. And then the last one's a little different. It's the automobile data. And so I want to look for some used cars out there. Vanilla. Vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. Can Camaros, Mustangs, and Chargers. Honda Accords, Toyota Camrys, and Nissan Altimas. Does it get more vanilla than that? I know vanilla with automobiles. I drive a, a Nissan Rogue the most vanilla car in the history of automobiles. For the automobiles, you're gonna be looking at how much they're asking, what's the asking price. The mileage of the vehicle probably has something to do with the price and the model. And again, you're gonna choose three models like Honda Accord, Toyota Camry, Nissan Altima. You're gonna enter those as ones, twos, and threes. And you'll have the opportunity to tell me what the ones, twos, and threes represent at various times throughout the semester. Each of these data sets ends up with 75 observations, 25 ones, 25 twos, 25 threes for the location or the model. As I write projects this semester, I talk about the pricing variable because everyone's got a dollar amount, whether it's a rent and asking price um, or whatever you call that. And then you'll see a lot of things I write in projects as size slash mileage. And depending which data set you're working with, you might be working with sizes or you might be working with mileages. Um, you're going to be entering this data, and again, see my, my statistics, um, see my data, what am I going to call that? I'll call it something clever, like entering data. Just check out that video, um, or just create an Excel data set. When you enter the data, you're going to be working with no commas and no dollar signs. So if you have an Excel spreadsheet, I don't want to see a uh, $200,000 house, I just want to see 200000, no commas, no dollar signs. Uh, $15,000 automobile is 15000 um, and create a data set and I recommend you create an Excel data set and save it to your hard drive or a flash drive or someplace that you'll have access to and then check out my uh, application gateway video to see how you're going to then import that into the application gateway where we're going to do our analysis. So anyway, that's all I have to say about your data set. The sooner you get this data, the better. Save a copy, save an Excel copy of this data set so that if something crazy happens in the application gateway, which by the way, it did this past summer. All of a sudden, all the files that were on the application gateway got deleted. I didn't do it, although I caught the wrath of a lot of students. As long as you have a backup copy, you'll be able to work with that and it'll work great. So that's the data. The sooner you get it entered and into a uh, statistics file or an Excel file, the better off you're going to be. And then we'll pick up from there later. Good luck.